the 1960s, a decade that started with such promise of growth and prosperity. The great war against the communists and the Illuminati is over, with only scattered pockets of resistance remaining. Regular citizens are taught self-reliance and self-defense, and the new open borders work policy allowing anyone from a civilized nation to work anywhere else to increase their skills through hard work and apprenticeship is leading humanity to a new golden age. Disaster strikes in the closing year of this decade. A pirate lord sets his sights on the fledgling spacefaring empire and invades, launching millions of slavers and pirates into the unsuspecting populace. Butchery and mayhem follow, a new empire almost in ruins, but the humans, the humans fought back. The rarely seen tenacity of this breed and their client races often led them to fighting to the last man, never surrendering, never giving up, and after a long, protracted, and devastating battle. The Terrans showed the galaxy that they were truly a force to be reckoned with. This is the universe of Star Shatter. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. As obvious by my intro, today we're talking about Star Shatter. Despite the grimness of the introduction, Star Shatter is more about hope and tenacity than grimdark. I like to think of it as 40k with hope. The first book in the series actually tells the tale of how the crew came together, and gives the origin for each member of the crew. This leads to a setup in a book that I have not seen yet, and it might just be that I've missed it before. But Star Shatter isn't set up as a traditional book. It's actually set up as a collection of short stories, with each chapter featuring one or two of the crew members. At this point, it is important for me to give you a little bit more backstory. Humanity has risen to the point where they are now a spacefaring race, and as such have inducted many other client races from the various animal life on Earth. This includes rabbits, gorillas, and hamsters, and at one point appears dogs as well. Before sentience is granted, the client race is usually modified making them larger, smarter, and more anthropomorphic. There are also several alien races, some benevolent, some not so benevolent, and I believe some yet to be seen, and a few supernatural elements just thrown in for flavor. Since I don't want to ruin the stories themselves, I'm going to give you a list of the crew and who they are. Lily is a female bunny, botanist, and farmer. Awesome is a hamster who specializes in salvage and ship repair. Anitza is the ship's captain and a member of the Dezenta race. Second in command of the ship is a combat gorilla named Cat, who almost ironically introduces us to the character that is a cat named Smurf, who is just a cat. Brianjar is an Asgardian mech engineer. Dozan Ray is a morale officer for the Terran military and a member of the Kilra race who sponsors and allies with the Terrans. Vasilisa is a female human spacer. Alric von Engelbert is a human star marine and has regenerative powers. Kara, a former test subject for cruel and vicious cybernetic experiments who has a connection to the greater universal consciousness. Boris, a former human slave and powerful telepath, and probably my favorite character, Orts, a sentient dog the size of a small horse. Each chapter tells a story involving either one or two of these characters, a bit about their past, and why they're doing what they're doing, with the final chapter showing how they all came to be on the same ship. The ship shares its name with the title of the book, The Star Shatter. Here's where, without spoiling too much of the story, I talk about the tone of the book. As mentioned before, it does make me think of Warhammer 40k, but with hope and a bit less xenophobia, using the correct definition of the word. But it also puts me in mind of Buck Rogers and Flash Gordon, the old spacefaring tales of heroism, altruism, just general tenacity and never-say-die spirit. The stories are fun and uncomplicated. There is very little gray area with any of them. All of them represent either fierce never-say-die spirit or great confidence and skill. It's a refreshing change from the everybody can be a villain, everybody can be a hero mentality, where there is no question who the good and bad guys are. 
and it's one of the things that makes the stories fun. And a small note here at the end, just regarding the structure of the book. There are a few spots that are a little rough, but the stories are interesting enough that these can be easily ignored and oftentimes overlooked, but they shouldn't distract you from what is a truly fun read. If you enjoyed this review, please like, share, and subscribe for more. If you are an author and would like me to review your work, please leave links to your book in the description. Thank you once again for listening.